Hello and welcome to my studio. I am Lydia and today I'm going to show you how to make an elevated bucket hat, which is basically a sun hat. I created a pattern for this, which is linked below. It's actually a two-in-one pattern. Last week I showed you how to just make a simple bucket hat, but made it out of organza to elevate it. And then this week we're going to use the same pattern with just a wider brim and these straps to make this gorgeous sun hat. So let's get stopped in. When you download my free pattern, you'll be getting two styles. The bucket hat pattern from last week uses piece A and B, but this sun hat pattern uses piece A, C, and D. The first two pages of the pattern give instruction on sizing, yardage, and printing. I also have a tutorial linked below for how to print and assemble your pattern, so be sure to check that out if you feel any confusion at all. Whatever you do, make sure you print your file at actual size or 100% scale so that you don't alter the size of the pattern. There are test squares on the first page that you can measure to ensure you're printing correctly. When it comes to the pattern, the seam allowance is 3 8 or 1 centimeter everywhere. Piece A is one of five panels that make up the cap of the hat. You will cut five of your outer fabric or shell and five for your inner fabric or lining. Piece C is the brim and is to be cut on fold to create the entire hat brim with a seam in the back and you will cut two of those. Piece D is the chin strap and you will be cutting four of those. For materials, you'll need firm interfacing, fabric, my pattern, scissors, matching thread, pins, and a 26 inch or 66 centimeter long piece of ribbon. I had this gorgeous basket weave cotton sitting in my fabric stash for far too long. I thought that the basket weave texture would be really perfect for this hat because it kind of gives me a straw hat vibe. To firm up the brim of the hat, I have some nice, firm, fusible interfacing. I didn't have enough of the firm interfacing for both the brim pieces, so I'm using a normal weight interfacing as well. You could even double a normal weight interfacing, or you could use a piece of muslin or just some kind of stiff cotton fabric as interfacing instead. Cut your two brim pieces on fold. and cut a shallow little snip at the fold to mark the center of the hat brim. Trust me, it will come in handy later. Make sure you also snip the little chin strap notches as well. And then cut 10 cap panels. Then I cut two of the strap pieces, but I recommend cutting four. It will be easier to assemble and I'll show you that later. I also cut two pieces of fusible interfacing. And now it's time to sew. First apply your fusible interfacing or whatever you're going to use to stiffen it to both hat brim pieces. If you're wondering why I put a cloth over it, it's because I don't want to get any glue residue on the iron. Next, sew together four pairs of panels right sides together, separately as shown, on one long side of the triangle. Then you can go ahead and push the seam allowance to one side and top stitch. To complete a cap, sew one of the remaining panels to one of the paired panels and top stitch. Then apply the two panel portion to the three panel portion and sew one long seam and top stitch the seam allowance to one side just as we did with all the other ones. With the other cap, I actually sewed four panels together, so there was a four panel piece, and then I sewed the fifth 
panel and it just wasn't as easy and didn't line up as nicely so it's better to do the way that I showed it. Then place the two caps wrong sides together so the side with the seams are touching. Then sew a stitch close to the edge around the perimeter of the hat. You kind of want this just as a pre-stitch to keep them together so don't sew at the 3 8 seam allowance, sew at like a quarter inch. Okay the caps are done so let's move on to the brim. With right sides facing, sew up the open ends of each brim piece. Press these seams open with your fingers and then face each brim piece right sides together and sew the outer perimeter. Then I'm going to push the seam allowance to one side and sew it close to the seam. This is called understitching. The side with the stitching will face down on the finished hat, so make sure you sew it on the piece that you want on the hidden side of the brim. You don't really have to do this, I just like how it gives a really nice crisp edge to the hat brim. Then you can just do a quick press to finish. Next, I folded the edges of my two chin strap pieces and then sewed them. But I recommend you cut out four pieces and place them right sides together, then sew around the long sides and skinny sides, leaving the wider end open, and then you can use some kind of skinny tool like a knitting needle to turn it out. Then apply these chin straps to the brim of the hat. If you snipped these notches on the pattern, you'll know exactly where to place your chin straps. Place them on the inner side of your hat brim. You can angle the straps away from the center back seam a little bit. Then just sew a stitch around the inner perimeter of the hat brim close to the edge catching the straps as you sew. We're now ready to sew the cap to the brim. Almost done. Place your hat cap right side out and facing down. With the right side of your brim facing down, pin your cap to your brim. Match one of the cap seams to the brim center back seam. Then match the center of the opposite cap panel to the center of your hat brim. I just fold the cap panel in half to get the center of it and then match it to that little notch that we put in the center of the hat brim. Then sew the seam. To cover this raw edge, I'm using a piece of bias tape I made. You'll need about 26 inches, or 66 centimeters. My binding is folded in on both sides, so I open up one side and sew it along the raw edge to the seam, leaving a little space at the start of the binding.
When I get back to where I started, I stop stitching an inch or so away from where I had started and I snip my binding. Then I sew the binding together and stitch up that gap that we left. Then I fold the binding up toward the cap and then just do a blind stitch to stitch it in place. So I take up a few threads of the inner cap layer and then pass the needle through the binding and then right above that stitch I take up another little chunk of the inner cap and continue the pattern until it's done. On the original bucket hat I actually just top stitch this area so that's an option as well. You can check out my other video for this. You'll see that I sewed the stitches a little too tight in some places on the sun hat, so I got a bit of a ridge along the edge of the cap, so just keep this in mind while you're hand sewing. Also, you might notice some puckers along the brim where the brim meets the cap. This is because my brim pattern piece was a bit too big at the time, so I had to ease it in. This is all corrected in the pattern for you, so don't worry about that, but I gave this a final press and was really happy with the result. If you end up making a hat like this, I would absolutely love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram at Lydia Naomi Studio or hashtag Lydia Naomi. Thanks for watching and enjoy watching me model this hat like a pro.